Hello there, what is going on everyone? Today I'm going to be giving you my top 5 units for the Republic in Star Wars Legion. The Galactic Republic, home of the Jedi and the clones, where might meets might and right meets droid faces. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, the top 5 units. Uh, also, I would love to hear from you guys if your favorite unit maybe didn't make my list let me know down in the comments. Also, jump in Discord. I'd love to hear from you guys in my Discord. We have a great family-friendly Discord. Uh, and all of those links are down in the comments section. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you enter to win that $25 Amazon gift card. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Also, big shout out to Luxury Playstyle. If you didn't already know, we're working on some Legion-specific tokens that I am helping design right now. So uh, this is a very, very cool journey, and we're going to have some fantastic legion specific tokens but if you play any other games or i actually use a lot of these tokens already for star wars legion you can save 15 percent by using code crabbock vip so check out luxuryplaystyle.com also while supplies last orders of 35 dollars or more are going to get a lightsaber nunchuck token thrown in for free okay let's go ahead and talk about our top five my top five maybe your top five i want to hear how many you guys agree with how many you guys disagree with there's a lot of really good units in the republic by the way so if something happened to be number six and just didn't get included on this list it doesn't mean that i'm trying to be like negative and, and hateful on any particular uh, unit but uh but here's my list and i'd love to hear what you guys think so coming in at number five the phase one clone troopers i, I know i'm curious how many of you guys did not expect to see these and like who puts the basic first entry level core option on a top five list this guy does and i'll tell you why i'm going to go into it i want to tell you why i rank these guys so high um because i think they're awesome is, is one of the main reasons but but honestly i think a lot of people have looked past the phase one clone troopers and there's been so many things that have come out that augment this unit that make them better uh even though clone troopers as a type no longer have that whole standby share ability i think the phase one clones are fine they they weren't one of those units that really really needed it anyway uh they were always kind of a good unit for for actual fire support and also for firing for initiating the fire that another fire support can trigger off of um but they have a lot of what the phase two clones have and phase two clones are great but they also happen to cost more and that is certainly a a thing to consider now there are things about phase two clones that make them a required core or that make them a good core that make them a better unit than the phase one clones but the phase one clones have all of those things sort of available to them a la carte whether you're going to take some of those normal like you know uh, Re republic or the clone specialists and uh, add them to this unit uh you can do that or you wanted to take uh, or the phase one clone specialist unit themselves which is part of the phase one clone pack like the phase one clones have their own upgrade expansion that isn't available to phase twos so that's like a big bullet in the hat or maybe a feather in the cap not a bullet in the hat no you don't that's exactly the last place you want a bullet is right through the cranium area so we're gonna we're gonna change that to feather i might have to edit that out but maybe it'll make its way in so a feather in the cap for the for the phase one clones is uh, not a bullet in the head um, is, is the fact that they have their own upgrade expansion, which is a big deal for them. Um, my favorite weapon of all time happens to be the Z6 uh, cannon. And uh, and of course, the Z6 heavy weapon uh, is, is, is here. It happens to also be cheaper than the phase two Z6. So not only is the base unit cheaper, you can get those upgrades cheaper. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a great like I love to run Z6s. And the cheapest place to get that many dice is in a phase one clone with a Z6. That's just, that's just a great way. I mean, at least for the Republic. You know, yeah, yeah, Rebels have an even cheaper way to get Z6s out there. But this isn't a Rebel list. This is phase, phase one clones. And with fire support built into this unit, it's a really cheap way to get a billion extra dice into an existing attack pool. So it's really, really cool. Um, there's also a lot of great upgrades you can put on these guys, but they also have access to other really, really awesome options like the DP-23. I mean, Pierce now you've got on your Phase 1 clones. Very cool stuff. You know, the Phase 2s have a lot of potential, and I would love to see them get their, you know, a, a, a second wave of... Uh, 
our core unit expansion upgrade packs, you know, fleet troopers and snow troopers could certainly use that love. And if they follow in suit, then maybe phase two clones will have some new heavy weapon options at some point too that, you know, that make them have more of a distinguished or set apart place. Phase two clones are fine, but I mean, phase, phase ones have more options and they're cheaper. And since you have to have three core at least, um, you know, and you, sometimes you want to tr experiment with some other Jedi and do other cool things. Uh, phase clones are just the way to go for me. So I, I end up in most of my lists, maybe running one phase two clone, but most of my core tends to be phase one clones. We, you know, I can fit the most Z6s in there for the cheapest amount. Sometimes you want clones just to be token generators and phase one clones work fine for that. Phase twos can work for that too because they do get that reliable one, but you can also get reliable one uh, if you want to do something fun like put a clone commander on a phase one. So I mean, there, there's ways to do that also. So what if there's anything you really specifically needed or if you need, even if you need a training upgrade, you can you can put you know that, that leader upgrade that's only available to phase ones. You can get that on there too. So they, they just they, they kind of allow you to build your clone unit a la carte. Um, and uh, if you want to go minimalist, you can do that too for a much cheaper price than phase twos. So I really like the phase one clones. And since you have to have core, that means that these guys are going to show up in almost all of my lists. Well, in in hundred percent of my Republic lists, you're going to find uh, many phase one clone trooper units. Number four, I, I'm doing a lot of stuff from the starter box, right? Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan is going to get some extra love uh, from me in this list because, well, he's always been a solid unit. Obi-Wan doesn't have any flaws, and I mean that in two different ways. I mean that, uh, and of course, the way that uh, he's just a well-rounded, excellent commander who, uh, you know, was a fantastic inclusion from, you know, in the core box. But I also mean it in the uh, the, the the more literal, the, maybe the more literal way, in that uh, Anakin has come out, and Anakin has a flaw card, um, and Obi Wan Kenobi does not have a flaw card. In addition to Anakin's flaw card, uh, Anakin also has command cards that do negative things to him. So Anakin has a whole bunch of drawbacks for for being able to you know use uh, dark side force upgrades if he wants you know so I just I, I I prefer Obi Wan so much over Anakin and that's not the only reason he's on there I mean he's got a command card that says my catchphrase so I feel like every time Obi Wan plays this one pip hello there it's and this this is kind of like Fantasy Flight Games' way of thanking me for my many, many years of free advertising for them. That's just, and, and, and that's just my headcanon. That's not necessarily what it did. Of course, if you were making Obi-Wan, there was going to be some kind of hello there reference. Of course there was, of course. No, no, no question about it. But gosh, if I don't have a soft spot for Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, come on, guys. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, you know. I mean, I started every, I started every video with hello there. So, of course, I had to give a special place to Obi-Wan. But, uh, but, but there's other things, you know, besides the sentimental reasons. Uh, there's been new upgrade cards that have come out that I think have made him uh, a lot better. He, you know, we've, we got the defensive stance, offensive stance. Not always the best option for Obi-Wan, but it's not a bad option for him either. He can certainly benefit from dodge tokens. He doesn't necessarily need that many aims. He's got a good enough dice pool and has critical two in his dice pool where he might not need an aim all the time, especially if you're doing saber throwing with a multicolored dice pool. If he does throw his saber, if you give him saber throw, um, he gets to choose the half of, so he can roll two red and a black, which is pretty good for a pierce two ranged attack if you do that with critical two. Uh, on top of that, so he's got actually a pretty, he's a pretty decent candidate for saber throw if you want to do that, but a lot of times people might not do that all the time because he doesn't have relentless, he has charge, which again, charge is great, um, it, it's a very good thing to have, you know, like Jedi Luke, for example, does really, really well in rebel lists, and Obi-Wan Kenobi has a lot of things in common with Jedi Luke, um, you know, he's got a great lightsaber, he's got critical, and they're pure, I know, now, now, you know, Jedi, I, I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to, to, to operative Luke Skywalker or Jedi Luke from the, uh, from the Rebels, because there's a lot of things that are going on here. Now, Jedi Luke has surge to crit, whereas Obi-Wan has critical too, uh, you know, that's probably going to be about the same thing. There's not that going to be that many times where you roll more than two surge in an attack. So, so really critical two is Great impact two pierce two great weapon. Um, Sorosu mastery uh, is going to uh, also work um, 
when you're using Guardian, which is really, really cool. Um, and so, so I think Obi-Wan is a, actually, a, you know, defensive stance can really work well here. If you do want to spend that action, charge allows you to do that. You can get to the extra bonus uh, from that. But, but you know, Force Barrier or uh, Tenacity is another really good option with, with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've got Force Barrier right there. I've been looking at it the whole time. Uh, but Force Barrier is also one of the newer upgrades that if you want him to be that guardian, that defensive kind of position, it, it works even better now uh, with Force Barrier. So I really like uh, I really like Obi-Wan. And I feel like there's other, other uh, there's a lot of things that have come out. And he's got good command cards too. You know, I mean, all of his command cards are great. He doesn't have any command cards that are like absolutely game breaking. I mean, he, he's got good command cards that are going to give out tokens and he, he can certainly load up on tokens with hello there. It happens to be a very good card, um, but but nothing like that's completely breaking the game. He's just so well-rounded. Uh, he happens to be a little expensive, but not that much more expensive than Anakin. And I just really prefer Obi-Wan over Anakin. Um for sentimental reasons and for just mechanical reasons too he's just got a lot of great things and he has that command slot too if you want to put aggressive tactics on him which is just a good option all around uh i just think he just he just totally rocks and so obi-wan kenobi another happy landing at number four time for number three number three padme amidala a character i did not want to like at all uh i, I was just so I don't know, underwhelmed when, when, when they announced that Padme was coming into the Republic so early. It wasn't that, um, it wasn't that they were, they, they were doing Padme. I mean, you know, I have some issues with the, the character of Padme, who is supposed to be a senator that's always getting into fights. You know, I don't think that's how senators should behave. You know, I, I don't think that's the job of a senator, but I get that that's just the character that she happens to be. And my issue wasn't necessarily that she made it into the game, but I am a big fan of the Jedi aspect of this game. And uh, I thought if they were going to do another operative, I thought there's a lot of lightsaber-wielding characters that maybe could have made the cut first. So when they announced Padme, I did not, did not want to see her um, quite so soon. But since Legion is less about lightsabers and a little bit more about shooty shooty bang bangs, uh, Padme kind of works with that. We also have R2-D2 who had come out that has a whole secret mission thing going on. Padme can get secret mission with her diplomatic cover stuff. And so that's like, you know, there's some cool things going on. But what's made Padme, you know, jump up so high in my opinion is two different things. One is a big change to the rules that prohibit clones now from sharing standby tokens. Um, and, and why is that so important? Well, she has Exemplar built into her unit card, which means she can still allow them to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, friendly units can do that. So even like tanks and things can, can get standby tokens from Padme, which is just, it's just uh, incredible. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and also, you know, by the way, she also helps fuel Jedi, too. So if you're running Anakin and Obi-Wan, or either one or even both, uh, you can you can absolutely have Adme, Padme do some uh, quick thinking and dodge, and all of a sudden, now you got extra dodges for all those other all those other Jedi that you happen to be running around. So she just makes, she's like an incredibly good support character. She's, she's better than an incredibly good support character. She's maybe the perfect support character. Um, and, and you don't even have to play her just as su support. She comes with her own gun, too. That's uh, like a range three gun. So she can be a decent little shooter. And you can trigger fire support off of a surge to hit character that has pierce. And that's kind of cool, too. Uh, you, and the cool thing is her basic, her built-in gun, you don't even have to you know bring in her extra gun. Her built-in gun also happens to have pierce and still has three dice. You just have to be a little closer. And usually you don't play Padme quite so close. So authoritative, exemplar, all good things. Sharpshooter 2 is also another just a tremendous thing. Like, like she didn't even need that. You know, a lot of times you're not even shooting with Padme. But if you decide you want to shoot with her, it's just insane. Like, sh Sharpshooter 2. So you can be behind heavy cover, and I still have Pierce 1, and you get no bonus for cover. And fire support. You know, <laughs> or something crazy. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm saying and fire support, like assuming I have some phase 1 clones with a Z6. Wink, wink. Ready to go, you know. That's why they're on this list. It's just every. It's just. It's just perfect. Um, but but there's also been new upgrade cards that have come out that have made Padme even better since uh, she came out. So we already talked about the the standby sharing. Exemplar just makes her really really tremendous support for clones now. Kind of helps bring them back to their borderline. You know, it, she brings them up to borderline OP. 
Um, overpowered. OP stands for overpowered. The more you know. Doesn't well. It also stands for organized play or original poster or orphaned peasants um, or or um, ozone phosphorus. It stands for a lot of random things I could just come up with. Let me know your favorite OP word down in the comments section. But uh, but no, she but she helps you know really kind of uh, fill that gap that uh, that now the clones kind of have that maybe some players kind of got used to. I never really did that much in the way of standby sharing. I only did it a few times, so I feel like having Padme just allows that to happen. But there's so many other tokens you can share out too, and she also has that range one to two. It's got like she's got that 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 longer, that really great range. Authoritative is also kind of cool, and so like seize the initiative is another new card that she can now take, and she can just be like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take an order. Oh, let me pass it to somebody else too. So she can just she can just give seize the initiative to anybody within range one to two, which is not a, it's a decent sized bubble. You want her kind of close to everybody else anyway. But there's new things like inspiring presence. A lot of people don't realize, wait a second, she's not a commander. I can't use her courage of three uh, for other people to keep them from panicking. Yes, you can if you use inspiring presence. This specifically says that people can use your courage value. It doesn't say they can use your commander courage value. It just says they can use your courage value. So if you could put, if there was a way to get this upgrade on a phase two clones, or or what or, or or something like that. You could you could do that. You know there is currently is not. But if there ever was, it would work. And, and there's a reason Padme's artwork is on inspiring presence uh, because you can put that on her. It's a cool option. Um, but vigilance is probably the one card that I think is maybe the coolest to run on Padme if you're running her with Jedi. Even heck, even if you're not, it's still good. Um, but I think it's especially cool if you happen to be running her with Obi Wan or an Anakin. Uh, you can let them keep. And again, I just mentioned Anakin. Like I think I mentioned Anakin two or three times during this. I said I liked Obi Wan better than Anakin. It doesn't mean I don't like Anakin. It doesn't mean I think Anakin's bad. I just happen to prefer Obi Wan. That's why he's he's higher on my list. Anakin would still be in the top ten. He's definitely in the top thirty. That's a joke because there's not that many Republic. There's not that many Republic expansions out there. So that was a joke for you new players. But uh, but the old players are. They knew that. It's, it's 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 you know I'm a really funny guy around here. I'm like I'm like one of the funniest people on this channel. So anyway, the uh, vigilance um, just great for letting. Uh, let, oh well, you know what Obi Wan, you get to keep that dodge. You didn't need to use it this turn. No problem. You're gonna have it ready for you next turn. So even if you get shot, even if we end up losing the bid, you get shot first turn. You're gonna have that dodge. It's just a really great thing to have. Um, so and she's got she's got decent she's got decent command cards. Um, they're they're not like super great, but uh, but I think diplomatic cover is actually one of the coolest ones because you can you can give yourself that secret mission. Um, it's uh, it's it's nasty. You can infiltrate and get that secret mission, or you can just save it and then reliable one, turning the support value up to like up to eleven. Oh, now not only am I doing all this other supportive stuff, handing out orders, letting you all share my tokens, I can get aim and dodge tokens. Now I'm also gonna also have a surge on top of that. Forget about it, man. And and she can shoot and 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 trigger all that other stuff. She can let people keep the, pass out orders. It's just it's it's insane how how crucially good she is for support, and the fact that she can also shoot pretty well uh, is like. And just insane. I, I I don't even have words for that. Like she doesn't even she could lose abilities and still be great. Like she she don't need nimble. She don't need sharpshooter too. I mean those are great. Those are good for her to have if you do want to take her. She doesn't need th martial arts. She doesn't need three black dice with surge to hit for 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 melee attack. You're not taking Padme in there to have her kung fu chop anybody in the middle of the game. Nobody wants Padme to go leading the the Terrascasi invasion of Star Wars Legion. That doesn't happen. But she's got it in case you need it. It's just, it's just surprisingly good. Surprisingly good. And I did not want to like her. All right. Number two. I want to know, if you, have you guessed anything right so far? What do you think is coming up? Yeah. How many of you fast-forwarded ahead to see what number two and one were? That's, that's cheating, my friends. Shame on you. You're going in the penalty box. But for all of you who haven't uh, jumped ahead yet, thank you for sticking with me this far. Let's see what happens next. Now, on next week's episode of Dragon Ball Z, will the number two choice be your pick? Will it be Frieza? Will you collect the two-star Dragon Ball? Find out 
on Legion Ball Z. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's just move along. I'm having a good time, right? I love talking about these games. All right, number two, Arc Troopers. I mean, they're insane. I, I, how many of you guessed Arc Troopers would be on this list and would be pretty high on this list? They're 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 insane. So. Uh, I'm going to talk about the full unit of... It's hard because like a unit like this, they have two different ways you can run the unit. So I, I am talking specifically about the full unit of ARC Troopers here. But, I mean, honestly, there's a strike team also. But um, they're insane. They're, they're, they're a little on the expensive side, but they're uh, it's a, just a very, very, very good unit. It has so many great things and so many good upgrade slots available, and they come with so many cool things. You've got a couple of named troopers. You've got a generic also if you don't want to do that. So you can run three of them with all with heavy weapons if you want to. But you got Echo and Fives that, that come with this unit that are kind of part of this unit. They can go into this unit, but they can also go in regular clone troopers too. They can also go in, into your phase ones and phase twos and stuff like all that crazy nonsense. Um, but but they're just they're just incredible. Uh, they have two courage, which is awesome. Of course, red defense die like you come to expect. Uh, they've got range one to three with the black die like you come to expect. But if they can get closer to you, they're rolling two dice per mini, right? Two dice per minute. Look at that. A, a black and a white at range one to two, which is really where they want to be. They really can shine here. They get a little bit closer built into that because of Scout 2, so they can get a little bit closer. Um, they have Impervious, so in case you come at them with the nasty Piercy sh stuff, uh, Impervious, I mean, forget about it. You know, extra red dice? Yes, please. Uh, Sharpshooter 1, which just means... Oh, well, you already suppressed? No problem. You get no you get no help from that. Or even in heavy cover, you only get in one die. So sharpshooter is just incredible. But their last keyword is the one that's just so good for clones specifically. I mean, it's good for anybody, but it's really good for clones too. Tactical one. After you perform a standard move, gain an aim token. So they can move, aim, shoot. They kind of get three actions a turn that way because that you want, and, and it just it builds into this unit so well. They have, you know, they want to get to range one to two. They, they want to do that. And if they happen to already be, then they can just get a more optimal position. Maybe they get you out of heavy cover into only light cover, and now they, you know, get now all your cover gone. Or maybe they just move slightly closer to that objective they need while also doing that. And they can get those jump packs. You can put the jump packs on them so they can fly two, which is just incredible. Um, but range one to two, two dice per mini, and you've got these heavy weapons. So you're getting just a really knockout home run attack pool. Uh, which is just in, insane. Uh, it's just a really great attack pool that you're getting. And, of course, if you can have lethal if you run an echo in there. Critical one. Um, coordinate is just insane. A two with fives. Coordinate's just a, a, absolutely crazy because of things like fire support and some other stuff we're going to see. Like command cards like take that. Clankers, uh, just insane with, with having extra face-up order tokens out there. So, like, echo and fives just work wonders with the ARC troopers as well. And the fact that they can take, they have comms, they can take HQ uplink. Uh, so they can just, you, you know, if you're planning, you know, a big fire support kind of turn, you could just be like, all right, boom, you know what? These guys are going to start out ready to go. Oh, is it a take that clanker's turn? Boom, we're going to start out there ready to go. And just insanity. You can, uh, you know, they have training. You can give them, uh, you can give them Overwatch if you want them to do that whole standby thing. They're, they absolutely work for that. It's less great now, but it works great with Padme. But, Offensive push is just incredibly good right now, right? So uh, now they can move and get tactical two. I mean, for, they're, just, they're just insane. Next up is number one, Clone Captain Rex. If you hadn't guessed it by now, I'm sure now you would guess it because you can read it right there on the screen. I that, why, why, why would I say guess it? It's Rex. Rex is just, um, I think Rex is under-costed. Currently, he probably needs to cost a little bit more because he is so good for this faction. He is a clone trooper and he's a commander, which means he also, you know, like the latest, uh, you know, expansion that just came out for, for uh, you know, for clones specifically. You, you know, he's just he's also happens to be an extra option to play that new two pip super beam attack. Right. But, uh, you know, and that, but that's just an ancillary reason. I mean, he's, he's got Surge to crit, for crying out loud. Oh, do we have a whole faction here that, like, all of the core have fire support but no Surge? Boom. Okay, here's a commander that you're going to want to put with them that has Surge to crit. Insanely good. 
All right, and he's got three red dice. Uh, and Gunslinger, so kind of like six red dice on one guy. It ranged to, it's a boom. Okay, Scout 1 and Scouting Party. He gives, lets you guys all get closer. It's so, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Sharpshooter 1 is great. Tactical 1 also. All those reasons that made the arc troopers great rex founded all of those reasons right we had all of those all of those things first and we loved it but we could only have it once because it was just on rex and now we and of course now we we get the arc troopers and they all have it but he founded it he's the granddaddy of excellence the granddaddy of excellence that should be his subtype name right clone captain rex granddaddy of excellence that's what he should be called um but yeah, he, he's just an, an incredible. I mean, he's got command. Aggressive tactics is a no is a really, really good option on him. Offensive push, again, kind of like with the arcs. There's going to be a lot of similarity with the arc troopers here. Um, he can take a jetpack. He gets a little discount on it, too. It's super cool, super groovy. Um, Recon Intel is actually really, really good with him because you've got, you've got Scouting Party. All right, and they get to use your scout value. So now you can scout two if you're on advanced positions or whatever. You can scout three even, and then just be like, boom, everybody's going. You know, not everybody, but two people are going to be like, come with me. We're we're going really far. Um, but but all of those things are are, are great. He's got great upgrade slots, uh, two gear, which is really cool too. You can help keep him alive. If you want to put emergency stims or something on him. He's only ninety points. Like, and the, what else is great about him? You don't have to run any of this. Any of it. All the single ladies. All You can run a single Rex. All the single clones. All the single... Why am I singing? I just love talking about Legion. Anyway, um, you know, Rex is... He can take him naked, and he still does a great job. You know, he does only have that five health. He's only courage two. But that's okay. You know, there's so many things that, that balance all of those things out. Um, because the, what really puts him over the top is his command cards they're they're absolutely incredible um we're not programmed it, it is four orders and he gets inspired too which is just like it, it's a good thing it, the clones definitely don't want to lose actions um so that much is good but if it's issuing four orders which is tremendous um especially again with a with a with a faction that has fire support kind of as one of its core functionalities um that's just awesome and by the way so there's so many clone troopers too. Like that can go to special forces. That can go to Rex. Like that can go to like almost anybody. You can't really put it on Jedi as much, but here's a faction that's kind of built all about clones, and he happens to be one of them. It's another thing that makes Rex so great too. Is he gets to share all of that stuff that he generates with his friends. Right? He can move twice and just like, oh, I got to, I I got into a great position. I can support everybody now. Oh, I also, also have tactical one on each of my moves because offensive push only gives you the one time because it's an exhaust but when you have tactical one on your unit card it's every move so he could even exhaust that for one move and then move again and now he has three he's got two for his tactical one and then one more for that extra one he had on offensive push it's just, just beautiful because he had tactical two for one move and then one for the next ah it's gorgeous um so we're not programmed as good um Take that Clankers, his two pip, is where it really, like, it, this is the card that, like, defines Rex just saying, you know what, everybody, it's murder time. You know, that's what Take That Clankers is. It should be called It's Murder Time. You know, I, I, there's so many things in this faction that have come out at, since Rex and after Rex that make it even easier to get lots of... It, like, when this first came out, it was like, oh, okay, two guys can now have, get a bonus to their range for all of their guns. Ooh, which makes, it's just insane if you have a Z6 in there that's normally range 1 to 3. This kind of pushes it up to range 5 for a Z6. And what I mean by that is if you've got, like, a again, one of the reasons why I really like the Rebel, uh, or sorry, the, 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 the Specialist, the Phase 1 clone Specialist, they can just take a free aim whenever they want. So, you know... Like they're like, oh, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I can advance forward. I mean, and maybe you were running somebody like a phase two with offensive push too. Like it, it totally works also. But you can move forward, get a free aim, and now shoot at range four. So a move and range four is almost like a range five. So uh, a type of attack, and 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 that's just with the range three weapons. Now all the range two weapons can also go like farther than range three because now all those range two weapons are you know treat up to range three now. 
What's also amazing about this is grenades now suddenly become range two. So now you can hit a snow speeder with a grenade with take that clankers, which is really, really insane. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. I did it like once in one game. and It was r just amazing. But it, it just allows for that alpha strike and where people don't see it coming because people think, oh, you have a range two shotgun with pierce. No problem. Oh, yeah. Well, take that clankers. Now it's a range three shotgun. I'm going to move free aim and boom. Now a range, you know, effectively a range four piercing shotgun uh, with fire support from a Z6 unit. It's like a million dice, and you and, and there's pierce, and you and you're and you're gone. You're just you're gone. You're you're off the table. Take that clankers is just insane. And then uh, if that wasn't enough, he's also got a one pip that's uh, that's really good too. It's not as good as, like his two pip is is the star of the show, but uh, but the call me captain where he gets fire support and he can just add his three dice to every attack that happens um, is potentially absolute insanity but it's a little bit tricky to do and rex usually dies before you can you know completely wipe out your opponent opponent's entire army based off of it but you're probably going to get at least a couple of uh, a couple of fire support shots if, if you play it right and so it makes for a really fun uh, and and scary one pip and you don't even have to run that one pip just the threat of having rex on the table and you haven't played all your one pips yet your opponent's always gonna be like i can't get my forces too close to rex that intent that mental game is really strong right there so rex is clearly number one all right, guys, let me know in the comments section, what did you guys think of my list? Did you agree with some of the stuff that I had on here? Do you disagree with any of it? Was uh, was there anything that I left off that you thought should have been on there? There were a lot of things that were kind of pushing for the number five and four spots, but I, I kind of I kind of made some hard decisions there. But, and, and again, it's it, a lot of it's my preference, but uh, I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments section. Also, be sure to check out the links in the description below. Jump in our Discord there. Follow me on TikTok, on, on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that cool stuff. And big thanks to my patrons. You guys are amazing and help make this all possible. So thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys later. And as always, have a great day.